So I've thrown uh, something on the screen, and I want you to actually pause the video for a second and uh, take a look at this, see if you can figure out uh, what's going on here. So hopefully you've taken that time, you've gone in, and you've actually uh, come back with a little bit of a question. Uh, because if you, we kind of take a look at that math right there, double number equals 1 minus uh, 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1, minus 0 0.1, I should come back with a 0 0.5. This should be uh, so rudimentary that I don't even understand why uh, you made me pause the video and do this in the first place. Except, huh? Uh, that's that's not right. That's a 0 0.5000000014001. Huh? Well, here's what's going on. Again, when we looked at the idea of having a, a decimal place uh, in code, in programming, we run into a bit of an issue. You know, that 1.0 that's going on there, or any of those decimal places, uh, 1.0, could I have not just said uh, 1.00 or 1.000? Uh, where do I stop? And I, I have to go a very, a very long time. You're thinking, oh, well, I can just stop. Uh, the computer stops at some point. Well, how it stops actually is kind of at that rounding off point. It has to find its uh, middle in between, you know, that next digit. Uh, so what's actually going on there is, with all of these, is I've done that so many times, so often, that I run into this issue. So suddenly, when I do some uh, floating point math on the computer, even though the computer is very good at uh, doing mathematical calculations, it runs into an issue of uh, storing those ones and zeros and what equates out. So all of a sudden, I get something like uh, 0.5, 14 zeros, 1. So how do I resolve this? And this is actually known as creating something known as an approximation. An approximation is uh, just that. It's me setting up something that's just, uh, it's close enough, if you want to think of it like that. I'm, I'm making something that will be uh, close enough to my answer that I'll go ahead and accept it as my answer. Again, this is going back to our beginning of the slides. We looked at those circles. This was close enough. The same kind of concept is going on here. Is I'm basically stating that all right, I'm close enough that I will accept this as an answer. So again, let's get back to our slides. So how do we do that? Well, we start off with something simply uh, by creating what's known as an epsilon. Now, I'm going to write out this code here. You can pause the video or skip ahead. and. A few things are going on here. Oh, not like that. That's not what I meant. So the first thing is that one, I made it a final, meaning it's a constant variable. Meaning my program can't change it. I can't change it. It's always going to be that. And one of the things that we do with that is we name it in all capital letters. This is just a good way to indicate this is going to be all caps. You know, I'm not going to be able to change this later, especially when my lines of code, my programming language is going to be, you know, a hundred lines of code or 200 or a thousand or 10,000. You know, when this starts to grow, I don't want to have to scroll up to the top of my screen just to see, oh, I can't change this. This is a good little indicator for me. So the next little bit is I'm going to keep the math going the same way, but now what I want to do is I want to see, is this close enough? And how I write this out is, simply put, I take whatever my actual number is, and then I, I just do some basic math. I go, all right, well, am I close enough uh, to what I was expecting? I'm expecting 0.5. And again, we're going to do that math. If we do that math, we get uh, 0 0.5 with a bunch of ones. So I'm not 100% there. Well, what I do is I, I write this out. I've got my math there. And I say, is that at least 
close enough to my epsilon uh, it, that it's less than my epsilon. Epsilon is sort of my cutoff point. You can think of it that way. It's the, you must be this tall to ride. So if I'm this tall, yes, I can ride. But if I'm this tall, no, I can't. That's what's going on here. So then I just write out my system dot out dot print line uh, number is approximately five point or zero point five. And if we take a look at that code for a second, we compile that up and then we run it. Oh, you can see. 0.5 is approximately 5. And so that's where we can get into that a little bit. But let's say if we change this out. What if I then said it was uh, that? Well, if we say it's only a tenth, in our case, you'll see that it's still approximately, uh, it's close enough. But let's fool around with this a little bit more. Let's see if we can't uh, change it a little bit. Let's get rid of, say, that last one. So this should be uh, 0.56. We compiled it up. We run it. Notice how we didn't get any print statement. Again, that's because if only happens when it's true. So we didn't get to see it. If I uncomment that first line of code, and compile this, I get to see what my expression is, and it's 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is not a, and it's still got you know the 14 zeros and whatnot, but 0 0.6 is not a 0.5. So again, it's not approximately 0.5. That's where these things can come into play. If I changed my epsilon so that it was a one, no, eh, maybe a one's a little too far. Uh, I'm gonna go with 0.5. Now we're being, you know, we're being a little uh, mucky on things to see if we can get this so that uh, 0.6 is approximately a 0.5. Again, let's think about what the math is going on there. 0 0.6 minus 0 0.5 gives me 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is less than 0.5, and so we've just stated that uh, 0 0.6 is approximately. 0 